Check one, two. Yo, yo, yo. What is up? Peace and richest blessings. Sending you all the love, all the good vibes. Welcome back to another episode of Wake the Love Up. It is a beautiful day to be alive on this amazing, wonderful planet. It's your boy, Burnell Washburn, and I'm feeling good today. I have a powerful episode in store for you today, all about mindful eating, rewilding, lifestyle medicine, raising your vibration, conscious consumerism. We've got some goodies in this power-packed gem of an episode for you today. So first and foremost, huge, huge, huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters. You guys mean the world to me. Shout out to everyone that's supporting and helping this work grow, helping impact more people. Uh, We continue to grow each and every episode, getting more and more downloads, more listeners. The tribe is expanding, and it's just beautiful to see your guys' messages and see you posting the podcast on social media and tagging me and just letting me know little takeaways that you're getting. And it's cool to see how it's really creating some powerful shifts in your life. So, um really, really grateful for that. Please keep it up. Even if you've been listening and sharing every episode, that means the world to me. Keep spreading the word. Let's keep waking the love up and playing our part in the awakening of consciousness here on planet Earth. That said, I want to give a huge, huge shout out and sincere gratitude to our new sponsor. That's right. Wake the Love Up has a new sponsor official moss life you can check them out on instagram at official moss life it's official m-o-s-s-l-y-f-e official moss life and it is based out of humboldt county california it's a new startup run by a dear friend of mine who is just an amazing goddess of a woman and not only is she sponsoring the podcast but she actually is someone that helped inspire a lot of what I'm going to be talking about today. So you might be wondering, what is Moss Life? What's this Moss about? Well, it's probably one of the best things I've ever put into my human body. And what it is, is it's premium grade Irish sea moss grown by Mother Earth. And it has so many benefits. So I have never felt better in my life consuming this moss And it comes in like this little kind of liquidy type of gel that I put in my water every morning. And usually I'll drink it like right after a workout because it's really anti-inflammatory and good for recovery. It's good for your skin health. It's good for thyroid and organ health. It has 92 bioavailable minerals. And minerals are so important. People overlook minerals and we talk about getting vitamins, but I think minerals are even more essential and it's essential that the minerals are bioavailable. Bioavailability means it's easily absorbed and used by the body. Some things might have certain minerals in it, but your body's not actually able to absorb it because they're not bioavailable. So it has all the minerals that you need. It helps your immune system, helps your stomach and digestive health. I have been digesting food and I just it got rid of like bloating and gut inflammation that I had replenishes all the vital vitamins, rebuilds your DNA, so many things. It just energizes you, balances you out, makes you feel absolutely amazing. You can use it in many different ways. You can use, you can make skin masks out of it and it's really good for your skin. Like there's just so many amazing things about Moss Life. So um, definitely go check them out at Moss Life Official on Instagram. Shoot her a message, let them know, let her know that you found out about it from Wake the Love Up from your boy Burnell and she might hook you up with some type of special discount or something and either way just get yourself a jar of this stuff and let me know how you feel because I'm feeling next level amazing and I've bought other expensive minerals and all sorts of things from the health food stores and you know they've been good but I didn't really feel that much of a difference like I felt like a little bit better for sure when I was, you know, started prioritizing getting my minerals, but when I started getting it from this, like, natural source, just this fresh Irish sea moss that's also just, like, made and packaged with so much love, I started feeling next level. So, 
Go check them out. Official Moss Life on Instagram. Tell them Burnell sent you. And get yourself a jar too. Get some jars for your family. And this stuff, it, it lasts a while because you don't even need that much of it per day. So definitely check it out. Get those anti-inflammatory, anti-aging, antiviral, antibacterial, packed with essential minerals and vitamins, anti-whackness, pro-goodness, awesome Moss Life. I'm just so blessed to have them as a sponsor, and I'm excited to see the company continue to grow, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. So go check them out and show some love. Now, let's jump into today's episode that was partly inspired by the owner of Moss Life. So I'm feeling better than I've ever felt physically, mentally, spiritually, all sorts of things right now. And I think one of the main reasons is because I've just, I've created a whole new lifestyle around health and wellness, prioritizing sleep, prioritizing nutrition, prioritizing time in nature. Um, it's really all about a lifestyle. I was talking to one of my buddies the other day that's on a health journey right now. And he was like, oh, once I lose X amount of pounds, then I'm going to be so happy. And, you know, I just need to, I just need to like be strict on myself on this diet. And so I'm just eating like nothing but fruit and until once I lose this X amount of pounds, then I'll be good. And then I'll be happy. And it kind of dawned on me that a lot of people have that mindset. They think they need to like attain a specific result and then they'll feel good about themselves. And, um, or they go on a diet for a while and they might drop some pounds and then they put it right back on because they didn't actually switch their lifestyle up. So lifestyle medicine is kind of an ancient yet newly popularized term that's starting to come out where like your life is the medicine. How you live your life determines your health. I mean, that's obvious, but people don't think about it. They think about like getting the right macronutrients and micronutrients or you know, working out or whatever like that. And they don't really think about the overall lifestyle. You know, how they're sleeping every night. The artificial light and electromagnetic, med, electromagnetic frequencies, a.k.a. EMFs, that are surrounding them. Um, you know, the clothes that they buy. You know, they're not maybe not thinking about the toothpaste they use or the laundry detergent that they put on their clothes that then absorbs into their skin or any number of things. So it's easy to just talk about different, you know, kind of like compartmentalize different modalities of health and wellness. And I've studied all the, you know, not all, I've studied lots of different forms of healing, you know, from Ayurvedic practices to modern bodybuilder science you know i've tried everything across the board and now i'm finally starting to get the big picture that it's all about my entire lifestyle put together it's not just this thing over here or that thing over there it's just this holistic approach of like what am i not just what am i eating but what else am i consuming through my ears and my eyes and my skin and um, everything carries a frequency everything is made of energy and it all impacts our health so when it comes to optimizing your health to raise your frequency you need to look at it with a holistic approach you need to be mindful about everything you're doing in life so i wanted to talk a little bit about that talk about just a few habits and shifts and things that have really been helping me so number one i mean you've already heard me talk about food and nutrition and, and what I'm eating a lot because that's very important and that was kind of like the first step in my journey as I went from you know eating fast food and stuff to like I started learning about the difference between protein and carbs and fats and things like that and that helped me to a certain level and then I started realizing about different macro or micronutrients not just the macros I started learning about vitamins and minerals and all that thing and then you know my health improved quite a bit and then I took it a step deeper and started realizing my relationship with everything that I consume affects what I'm so even if I'm eating something really healthy if I'm not mindfully consuming it if I'm just scrolling through 
Instagram or, or just zoning out on Netflix and just like shoving food in my body, that's like going to affect me a lot differently than mindfully, consciously consuming it with love and gratitude and intention. I always say to live intentionally. The more we operate with intention and mindfulness and awareness, the better our whole life gets. Because then it then it's harder to slip off path or make the wrong choices. And there's just so much magic. So let me take you back just a couple years to the first time I actually met the owner of Moss Life in person. We had been like social media homies. She had been supporting my music, all these things. And her name's Cora, by the way. And I go out to her farm in Humboldt County, California. And she takes us on a tour of the property. We're just feeling really connected to the land, showing me the garden. I'm getting all stoked. And this is before I was really that healthy. Like I was into health and wellness a bit for sure, but I wasn't as deep on my journey as I am now. And I wasn't really growing that much of my own food or foraging very much like I am now. And I noticed like how magical it was of an experience to eat a meal out of her garden. So she cooked us a meal from scratch, made with love, and I have never eaten better food in my life. To this day, it was just done with so much love, so much gratitude, so much reverence and respect for for the land and respect for her and the energy that she put into growing it and she put her all of her love into these plants from the time they were baby seeds to the time that we consumed them and I was like blown away because some of the things that were things that I normally wouldn't eat or normally don't really deem as healthy and yet when it was prepared in this type of way my body assimilated it in such a powerful way i've just like never felt better like every bite was magical and then the next morning i woke up just feeling amazing and like i still have like daydreams about that food because it was just so good so that started bringing me into a deeper level of awareness about my connection with what i'm consuming i started growing a little bit more of my own food started foraging, I started talking to my food and blessing it, you know, if I, I'm from Utah and it's predominantly Mormon in, you know, both sides of my extended family. So I, I was raised saying grace or like saying a prayer is what they call it before eating. And we would gather around the kitchen and close our eyes and, and say a little prayer. And it was kind of just, I never felt anything special from it necessarily because it was kind of just going through the motions. And it's easy to like, you can look at your food and say, thank you, I love you, bless this food. But if it's just empty words, then it's not really the energy behind it. Like it, when you're really emotionally feeling it, it's a whole different level. When you truly are grateful for every sip of water, it just, it goes down differently. You can say you're grateful and you can and, and you can feel grateful. There's a difference. So when you're feeling a deep sense of gratitude and appreciation and love for the food as you're growing it, as you're consuming it, and as you're purchasing it, etc., it assimilates in your body a whole different way. And scientists are actually starting to show that you can change the molecular structure Obviously, you can change the molecular structure of water, and lots of food is mostly water, So, and we're made of mostly water, so think about that. Water holds memory, it holds emotion, and if you're eating meats, for example, that have been tortured and traumatized, you are eating that trauma and you are becoming traumatized. And then you might wonder why you're depressed or angry or unmotivated or sad or whatever not realizing it because you are literally encoding your body with that energy by what you're consuming because it doesn't just matter what you're eating it also matters what what you're eating ate so if you're I don't eat meat but if I was I would only eat grass-fed grass-finished sustainable source like from 
ranchers that I personally know that I know that treat them well. They have happy lives and whatever. And same thing with plants. I don't want to just consume factory farm GMO non-organic plants that have been thrown in a truck and shipped halfway across the world because because when they ship halfway across the world they lose a lot of their nutrient density and there's lots of science this is not just some hippie stuff you can look all of this stuff up and see that the science you know if you a papaya doesn't grow in Utah so by the time a papaya gets to I mean I guess you could grow it in Utah in, in certain conditions it would have to be like an indoor kind of artificial setup or whatever but things like coconuts papaya whatever don't grow here and so just by shipping them from Costa Rica or wherever you might ship them from they lose a lot of their nutrient value so it's not going to nourish my body in the same way as if, as it would if I had picked it right off the tree myself so that's something to be cons uh, mindful of and just something to take into consideration you know, where are your foods coming from? Who's growing them? Um, are the farmers that are growing them being treated well? Because if they're being mistreated or underpaid, then you are ultimately responsible for that if you're consuming it. We vote with our dollar. And we vote by what we consume. And these corporate companies are just going to keep making whatever we purchase. So we complain about for deforestation and over ranching and holes in the ozone and climate change and all these things and we don't realize like we're the ones causing it by what we're purchasing it's not these evil companies that are just you know just trying to screw over the world like they just want to make money and they're going to do whatever we purchase so whatever makes them money and then they're just going to keep doing that so if we want to shift these ways we need to stop consuming things that are raping the earth and hurting our bodies simple as that and by the way, everything I say on this podcast is born out of pure compassion and pure love because this has helped me. In no way am I trying to like virtue signal or um, act self-righteous or hold because there's just a billion ways that I can still up-level and improve and I plan on just consciously getting better and better at all these things for the rest of my life. It's all about just starting somewhere, you know. I I remember there was a time where I used to drink lots of bottled water and, I, and then a friend of mine brought to my awareness that I was polluting the oceans like you love dolphins right you love going to the beach right you love you know being out in nature and plants and animals and all these things and well, yeah of course I do so then why are you buying these plastic bottles that are hurting all that and I was like oh dang I didn't really think of it like that okay that's some harsh reality to wake up to okay and then I, got, I went and got one of those five-gallon jugs and I started filling that up instead instead of buying all these plastic bottles from Costco and going through like 48 plastic bottles a week or whatever I was drinking. Um, and that was a step up from drinking tap water because at least I was getting, I mean, not really because it was like Dasani and stuff like that. So it was basically just tap water with wasted plastic. So I guess it wasn't really any better than tap water. But at least I was drinking more water than I was when it was only tap. <laughs> um, so it's... Everything I say here is out of compassion and love and no way am I trying to make anyone feel bad or criticize or act like holier than thou in any type of way. Um, we all just have improvements to make and if anything that I say can help even just one person shift their ways and just, you know, you're not going to change everything overnight. But if you just make one, one more conscious, mindful decision tomorrow when you're at the store and next week you take one little action to start reducing your waste or, you know, being considerate about your footprint, then this is worth sharing. And it just comes out of love and compassion. So anyway, I started shifting my ways and I'm continuing to shift my ways. And some things are hard because we've been so set in our ways of doing things and our old programming and, you know, just how we were brought up. Like, I didn't really realize that plastic bottles were that bad. I kind of heard about it, but I didn't think about it that deeply because I was just, I don't know, growing up, my parents just like bought hella bottled waters. And so I drank bottled water and I didn't really think anything of it. And, you know, I ate, I drank dairy because they just told me it was good for me. And, and you know, drink your milk. And, um, 
eat your Cheez-Its and your Doritos or whatever. Like, <laughs> And so, I, you know, some of us don't know any better, but as we wake up, we can start to look at our ways and just make better decisions. Better decisions for ourselves and for the planet and for the whole collective. So as I shift my ways, I just keep feeling better and better. And I had like a, a powerful um, psilocybin mushroom experience up in the mountains not too long ago where I was uh, going to the bathroom in the morning and I realized how much, how silly it is that back at my house, I go to the bathroom, I use toilet paper that, you know, they cut trees down to make and you, I actually get recycled toilet paper, so at least a little better, but, um, and then it goes down into a thing of water and through all these pipes and into this treatment facility that pumps all these chemicals into it to clean it. And I don't fully know how it all works, but I know that there's, there's lots of chemicals and machines and buildings and things like that that are required every time I go to the bathroom. And I was like, wow. In nature, you just go to the bathroom on the ground. Look, like every single animal just goes to the bathroom on the ground, and it fertilizes the soil and makes m more plants grow, and it gives nutrients back to the earth. And yet, here we are building all these buildings and machines and chemicals to like clean out this thing, and it just seemed silly to me. And I just realized I was like, whoa, like I don't even realize how much waste and harm I'm contributing to this planet just by like my everyday lifestyle so I started I've, I made a vow that over the next and it's not going to be overnight but over the next five years I'm going to transition into being you know a zero waste or a minimal waste lifestyle eventually I'm going to transition into being off-grid tapping into permaculture and the abundance of nature and harmony where I can feel good about everything that I consume, everything that I put into my body, everything that I purchase. I was just at the store today and I was about to purchase some things and I was like, wait, do I really need this? Or is there a more sustainable way? So I'm just starting to look at my ways and make better decisions. And it's really powerful and it's just, I'm feeling more connected to the earth because I love this place so, 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 so much. During my ayahuasca ceremony, the first time I drank ayahuasca, I had this, I met Mother Gaia, Mother Earth, and I realized how much she loves us and how much she provides for us. And she doesn't even like judge us or criticize us. She's just patient and loving and compassionate and we're so disrespectful to her. We're so ignorant to our ways. And a lot of us are starting to wake up. And it's beautiful to see that. It's beautiful to see. Um, I think I'm in a good place in my life to talk about this right now because I'm just waking up to all this stuff over as the last few years, you know. And I'm not like some zero-waste, ultra-sustainable person that's been doing it my whole life. Like, I've, I've been con contributing to mass consumerism gluttony my whole life. And I'm just now... At, you know, in my late 20s, and now I'm, I just turned 30. I'm just now starting to realize that my impact matters. What I purchase matters, and whatever I give my dollars to, that's who I'm putting in power. So if, if I support companies that don't give back, that don't care about where they're sourcing things, then it's ultimately me who's responsible. So it's beautiful to take my power back and look at how I can be the change I wish to see. And there's so many resources out there. YouTube is a treasure trove of sustainability and zero waste lifestyles. And I've been uh, watching all these people that are building tiny homes and going off grid and growing their own food. And I just met, I just uh, barely was watching this dude who um, he built a tiny home and he consumes 100% of his own food. So every single thing that he puts into his body he grows himself or he forages out in nature. And you'd be shocked how much you can forage out in nature. Like, I mean, that's where everything grows. And I, I was just, as I started to learn more about different plants and herbs, I started realizing, like, oh, I'm hanging out in spots here in the Rocky Mountains that are just abundant 
in nutrition that I didn't even know I could eat. Like, for example, stinging nettle. It's all over this place that I hang out at. And I used to always step on it and it like stings kind of like, it feels all spiky and stings you when you step on it. It doesn't feel good. And I wouldn't have known that that's like one of the most nutrient dense things that ever and I could harvest that in a sustainable way and really love and nourish my body, my avatar, my sacred temple, my vehicle. And I started, I got a plant identification app. I started looking at all the different plants that I was around and realizing there's just abundance of natural medicine growing all around that we don't even know about. So we're just chopping it down. And um, I, I saw some meme the other day on like a permaculture page, I think, that said like something to the effect of weeds are nature's way of insisting on us like noticing and utilizing her medicine things like dandelions people always you know cut, call them weeds and they spray chemicals on them and cut them out and first of all they look beautiful why would you spray things on them and cut them out because you're conditioned just oh i'm only supposed to have grass on my lawn because that's what my neighbors have and if i have dandelions on my lawn then it looks like i don't take care of my lawn and my neighbors will judge me that's literally what my parents did growing up. They literally would hand me a thing of chemicals and tell, hey, go spray these on the dandelions. And I'd be like, oh, okay, why? These, these look pretty. Like, why do I have to do this? And because they're weeds, you need to get rid of them. Oh, okay, all right. And so that's just what we're trained and conditioned. And then I find out as I grow up that dandelions and things like that are like it's one of the healthiest, most nutrient, nutritious things you could put in your body. I just had a dandelion green salad yesterday and it was delicious and I feel amazing. So, you know, most weeds are actually medicines and lots of things are edible and magical all around us that we don't even realize. So started waking up to that really helped me and just getting more and more connected to nature, hugging trees. You always see me barefoot grounding on my Instagram. You hear me talking about the benefits of that. Sun gazing, you know, the first 10 minutes of sunlight in the morning and the last 10 minutes of sunlight before it goes down, just staring right at it, improving my vision, balancing my hormones, improving my circadian rhythm. Um, you know, we absorb a lot of vitamins and, you know, like vitamin D from the sun and, um, there's microbes in the soil that are good for our immune system. Like you can actually eat dirt and it can make you healthier. And that seems counterintuitive to how a lot of us were raised and programmed in this Western culture and this modern society where we cut down nature to build subdivisions and then we put Walmarts in the subdivisions so we can ship toxic foods halfway across the world just so some high up billionaires can make even more money and we don't realize that we are feeding that whole system because we just don't know any better so doing whatever I can to help kind of like wake up the consciousness on that level and just rewilding getting back to like how did humans evolve to be forget the programming forget what you think you know like what did we really evolve so I started I, I sleep on the floor now and I've mostly been sleeping on the floor the last few years and I have a bed too because I bought a bed for my daughter because I was programmed into thinking that a bed was better and and I felt like I wasn't a good father if I didn't have a bed for my daughter so of course I bought her a bed and I noticed that I would wake up not feeling as good anytime I slept on the bed anytime I woke up after sleeping on the bed, my back would be a little bit sore. I wouldn't be as energized. I was like a little more groggy, you know. And I know a bed can be really comfortable. But I started learning the benefits of sleeping on the floor. It improved my posture and continues to improve my posture. It, you, it Basically, the way the pressure hits you when you're laying down on a hard surface, it kind of like squeezes the water out of your cells a little bit and forces you to move around which flushes out the, the fascia and 
There's just so many benefits. You can Google search like benefits of sleeping on the floor. And there's a lot of science on why sleeping on the floor is healthier for you. And it makes so much sense because human beings did not have beds until like a couple hundred years ago. That's a relatively new thing in terms of our evolution. Before that, we were on the forest, on the forest floor. We didn't have pillows and these memory foam mattresses and all these things. Like we slept on Mother Earth and she provided for us and helped us get good sleep. And a lot of times we were like waking with the sun and, you know, following the sun and the moon cycles and, you know, cleansing ourselves in natural bodies of water. I know I, my rave, my vibration has raised so much the more I get in natural bodies of water, natural lakes and streams. I don't swim in chlorinated pools anymore because anything that goes on your skin goes right into your bloodstream. It goes right into your body. That's why I don't use sunscreens and lotions and, you know, cologne and like, you know, mouthwash and all these things that we've been programmed into thinking that we need. Deodorant. Uh, we don't need any of this stuff. When you eat healthy, you don't need deodorant. Your sweat just doesn't smell bad. Um, and when you cleanse yourself in natural, body, in natural bodies of water, there's just these ions in there that balance you out and make you feel so amazing and it's exhilarating and it just feels so good to be connected to the natural, wild, free self that we were designed, that we evolved to be. You know, every time, I feel weird every time I take a shower or a bath in my house, even though I love baths, especially, you know, magnesium salt baths with rose petals and all that thing. It's, it's, a, it's a luxury high vibe. But part of me feels weird about that now because I know there's all this chlorine and all this crazy stuff coming through that water and that's going onto my skin, into my body, and I'm becoming that because we are what we consume, you know? And people don't realize, like, what you put on your skin is going into your body, so they be spraying all sorts of... I used to spray all these colognes on me to try it because I was programmed into thinking that that's how you get ladies because cologne companies advertised to me and showed pictures of all these gorgeous women just going crazy over these dudes after they sprayed themselves with some axe or whatever like <laughs> it's so silly to look at that and think about like most of the the ways that we're living our lives is just we've been we've been duped by these by these marketers by these companies who do not have our best interests at heart they just want to sell products and a lot of times the people that are you know making these products are just ignorant themselves it's not like all of them are malicious like haha I'm going to ruin these people's lives by selling them this deodorant with aluminum in it. And uh, they're not like, I don't think that's the case for most of them. Um, I think most of them are just ignorant themselves and, or they don't even know any better or they don't really care. They just want to make money. And so, you know, they market it as like, this is how you get ladies buy my product. This is, this is good for you. And it's not, it's toxic. So, um, same thing with like mouthwash. How many commercials for Listerine did you see growing up if you watch TV and how it kills 99.9% .9 of germs? Well, guess what? It kills the good germs too. It kills the healthy bacteria in your mouth that keeps your mouth clean. So now instead of using mouthwash, I make my own kind of Ayurvedic mouth uh, oil pulling situation with like coconut oil and some essential oils. And I don't even really use it that much because, it, like I said, the healthier you eat and the more connected you are with your whole lifestyle, you don't need all these chemicals. Like, you know, hand sanitizer is really big right now because of COVID-1984, the pandemic. And I have not once, not once put hand sanitizer on these beautiful hands because I have healthy bacteria and microbes in these hands that I do not want to kill because that's keeping me healthy. If I wanted to ruin my immune system, then yes, I would use hand sanitizer and kill all those good germs. Um, and it's just sad that like 99% of people don't realize this kind of stuff. So um, highly, highly encourage you to just start looking at your lifestyle, the products that you're using, the programs, the conditioning, and it's cool because the more we reprogram and um, unlearn 
all this bullshit that we've been taught, the healthier we can become and we can take our power back and we can actually save money because a lot of the natural things, you know, you can grow yourself or you can get super cheap. And if more of us, if all of us start growing it ourselves, then it'll be ultra cheap, you know. Um, I'm about to get a bunch of soap nuts instead of shampoo and conditioner and soap. There's a thing called soap nuts that's like literally zero waste and all you have to do is like soak these soap nuts and it turns into a solution. Then you could mix that with some other natural plants and stuff and make yourself some super high frequency shampoos and conditioners and you know, all these things we can make ourselves for cheaper, that's healthier, that's more sustainable, that has less negative impact on the world around us. You know, look at most average deodorants or toothpaste or whatever. There's like 1,800 different chemicals that are shipped all over the world and, you know, you got to keep rebuying it and all this stuff. So it's just not sustainable. And I think a lot of us are waking up to that and realizing that our lifestyle is the medicine or the poison. It's, you can't just like compartmentalize these things and be healthy in one area and then not in others. Like we have to look at our entire holistic lifestyle and rewild ourselves. I'm constantly asking, would this be out in nature? What would I do if I was just out in nature? And the more that I go camping, the more I start to realize what how I would do things in nature versus like what I would do at my house and just realizing I don't even need half of this stuff. I don't even need like a fraction of the amount of electricity that I think I need. I don't need to buy so many products and things and um, let alone medicines from people that are, you know, really off path and really not taking care of themselves. If you, there's a quote that says, if you think wellness is expensive, you should try illness. Because, you know, like, for example, I just barely paid $5,000, like $4,800 to get some cavities fixed because I didn't know any better back in the day and I got some cavities and I easily could have re reversed these cavities if I had caught them soon enough and just using natural remedies, I could have saved myself $5,000 but instead I go to a dentist, they blast me with all these, all this radiation because they want to take like 800 x-rays and then they want to like drug me up with some chemical, which I didn't let them do. I did it without any type of numbing or any type of anesthesia or anything. I got root canals just and just stuck the pain out because um, I have a high pain tolerance through meditation. I'm able to just love my pain and accept my pain and surrender to it rather than reacting to it but that's a whole nother episode so um and yeah it was just super expensive and I could have saved myself all that time and money so that's just that's just perfect example of if, if you think wellness is expensive I might have thought that like making myself an Ayurvedic oil pole you know some coconut oil and essential oils I might have thought that was expensive but that would have been like 12 bucks compared to 5,000 and I could have oil pulled 20 minutes a day for a f a, a several months or several years and like never had those cavities in the first place or reversed them before they got so painful. And like, for example, my mom, rest in peace, didn't take care of herself because she was, you know, just living in Babylon society, you know, on her way to work grabbing McDonald's breakfast every morning and McDonald's coffee and whatever. And then, and this is not to like criticize her or judge her in any type of way because I have nothing but unconditional love. And I think from the spirit world, she'd be happy to have me share her example um, so I could save someone else the same suffering that she had to endure, which was very painful to watch. And when it was all said and done towards the end of her life, she was spending, I can't remember exactly the amount, but I think she's, I remember she told me somewhere around like $15,000 a month on prescriptions trying to keep herself alive. And some people are spending way more than that. Think about that, $15,000 on some pills that are just going to kill you, which ultimately did kill her, and that's basically why she died, because all these steroids and antibiotics and 
painkillers and things like that that they were giving her just destroyed her body from the inside out. So Western medicine is super flawed. They don't make money from getting us healthy. They make money from keeping us sick. And we need to take our power back and go back into nature and rewild ourselves because Mother Earth provides all the... We are the medicine. And Mother Earth provides everything that we need to thrive and to be healthy and harmonious. So that's just one example of like, take care of yourself because if you don't, it's just going to... Your body temple is a sacred temple to be cherished and loved and appreciated. And when you take good care of it, it feels like heaven on earth. It feels so good. I can run up a mountain. I can play with my daughter. I can laugh and smile and dance and hike and do all the things that I love to do. But if you don't take care of your body, it turns into hell on earth. You're just suffering every day. It's just painful and shitty and... You don't even want to be alive anymore. My mom lost all of her passion for life and just didn't want to be on this planet anymore. Not because she didn't love all the people in her life and not because she didn't love, she even loved her job and she loved all these things. But the pain of being in her physical body was so excruciating that of course she didn't want to be here anymore. And who could blame her? I, I didn't, when she said she was going to just, you know, let it go, and stop trying to like fight this battle, I said, oh, I don't blame you. I respect your decision because I wouldn't want to be in that kind of pain either and it sucks to sit here and watch you suffer through that kind of pain. And ultimately that led me down this whole health and wellness pass, path. Because before that, I kind of ate whatever. I grew up eating fast food and, you know, I was addicted to soda. And then, you know, as I got a little bit older, I got addicted to cigarettes and I was drinking lots of alcohol, you know, you guys have heard my story. There's lots of toxic things that I was doing. And the most toxic thing that I was doing was, you know, blaming and complaining and judging and mostly judging myself and um, listening to toxic radio ways, scrolling through toxic social media accounts, watching violent toxic movies, um, all these things, they were, they were part of my lifestyle and it just led to me being sad and depressed and overweight and uh, I had no confidence. I was embarrassed about the way I looked for so many years. I went years and years. I went a decade without swimming because I was too embarrassed to take my shirt off in front of a woman or in front of anyone. And I love swimming. Now I be I just barely, last few weeks I've been swimming in all these high alpine lakes. Feeling amazing, just rejuvenating, regenerating the mind, body, and soul. Naturally. And it feels so good. And I'm like, I can't believe I cheated myself out of like over a decade of this. I remember I, I used to love going boating. I got invited to go boating with a bunch of beautiful girls one time and I said no. Not because I didn't want to go boating, but because I didn't want them to see me with my shirt off because I didn't have such low self-esteem. And so I had a lot of toxic things in my lifestyle and I was just thinking toxic thoughts and hanging out with toxic people and, you know, eating toxic foods and all these things were contributing to my suffering and I was doing it to myself just basically out of ignorance and, and programming so I took my power back and now I'm on the health and wellness path and it feels so amazing. I'm growing more of my own food, foraging my own food, just really, I really care about everything that I purchase and everything that I consume. I care about where it comes from, I care about who's affected by it, I care about how it makes me feel, you know, and it's coincidentally I'm just I've fallen like way more in love with food than ever before like I, I genuinely love eating fruits and vegetables and whole foods way more than I ever used to enjoy eating Arby's or Little Caesars or whatever the hell I used to eat I genuinely enjoy a nice cup of herbal tea way more than I enjoy soda and I, I, don't, I haven't drank soda in years, but I used to be addicted to it, and I loved it so much. So we can change our ways. Like, if, if I could change, then anyone could change. And 
I think, you know, my mom, my mom's situation definitely helped me and helped inspire me to like take this path more seriously. And I just started educating myself. I started subscribing to all these health and wellness podcasts and I started going within and seeing what resonated with me. And I, you know, I started shopping at different stores. I don't shop at the mainstream um, grocery stores as much anymore. Like I'm, I'm not going, instead of going to Walmart, I go to natural grocers now. Instead of um, going to the vending machine, I go to the apothecary. You know, and it's just, it feels it's so much better because I'm supporting good people. I'm more harmonious with the planet and my body just loves me for it. I have more energy more creativity, more focus, everything's better. And like you are what you eat and not, not just, you are what you consume, not just what you eat like as food, but what you watch on TV, what social media you, accounts you follow, this is all part of your diet. And I, you know, I started moving my body a lot more. I started walking a lot more because humans were designed to walk a lot. Think about that. I started intermittent fasting. We, we weren't designed to always have food. Think about in nature. Do we just, in nature, is there just always an abundance of the same food year round? Mm, sometimes in some places, but for a lot of places, certain foods are seasonal. Certain foods are far and few between. You might have to walk a long ways to get them or um, there's so many benefits of intermittent fasting because I think that's how we just evolved. We didn't evolve to like have constant access to just all this gluttonous food all the time I think we evolved to go through periods of like feast and famine periods where we might have like gone a couple days without eating anything and then maybe have a big meal once we finally once the crop was harvested or once we finally like killed that animal or whatever and back then I probably would have eaten animals because it would have been me killing it myself and I would have been connected to it and had a, a respect for the circle of life that I was part of Versus just like pulling up to a window and having, you know, someone biggie size my order for me. Like, that's, <laughs> oh, it's so sad. And I, I've, I know I sometimes probably come across as a little bit judgmental, but it's, I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad. I just, I genuinely love people so much that I just have to spit this truth. I love the planet so much. I just have to share this wisdom because I would feel morally wrong. I would feel out of alignment if I didn't preach this, you know, and I'm not trying to like tell anyone what they should or shouldn't do. I'm sharing what's worked for me and what's helped me. And hopefully that might inspire you to make some positive changes because you, you are worth it. You deserve to be thriving. You deserve to be healthy. You deserve to be eating fresh, whole, organic foods that are sustainably sourced, that you're connected to. Um, I, like right before I recorded this podcast, I went out and I ate some fresh fennel from my yard, which is really good for digestion and lots of other things. And I talked to the plant. The plant is my friend. It's a living being just like me. I said, hi, fennel. How are you today? Is that okay if I have a little bit? Of course. Oh, thank you so much. Mm, this is delicious. And then my body feels that love. My body feels that intention. My body knows that that's the best thing for me. And so it just assimilates it and absorbs it and digests it in the best way possible. And it's not just food. It's like everything in life. If we do everything with intention and mindfulness... We're just going to make better choices that serve all of us and serve the whole collective. It's mind-blowing how we can reverse diseases and heal ourselves through this mindful consumption rather than this gluttonous over-consumerism that we've been programmed and indoctrinated into. I have reversed crazy illnesses. I haven't gotten sick in years. The healthier I eat, the, just, the better I feel. Everything... It's just clicking in my life and it all, like how you do one thing is how you do all things. So it has translated into like every single area of my life. You know, not only is like my skin more clear and my hair like more luxurious, I'm breathing deeper and easier. I sleep better at night. 
I wake up feeling more inspired and motivated and energized. Um, I'm less reactive to people around me that might trigger me. I'm in a better mood. I, you know, every single thing in my life has improved since I started just going down this path and I continue to just keep evolving on this path the rest of my life. Every single morning now for the last couple of years, I've been going out sun gazing, barefoot grounding, practicing qigong. I basically replaced caffeine with qigong and I still have like some high vibe, you know, I might be sipping some rasa or just some amazing herbs and mushrooms and adaptogens in the morning that help energize me. But I don't even need that because after 30 minutes of qigong, I just, I'm ready to go. I'm so energized and it's way more sustainable than coffee. And, and, and I love coffee too. And it has its its place for sure. But, you know, over consuming it can really lead to adrenal fatigue and irritability and shortness of breath and things like that. And, you know, there's just natural ways to go about all these things and live a healthier, happier, more fulfilled lifestyle. And that's why I'm passionate about sharing all these things. Bless your water, talk to your food, and feel it. Don't just intellectually bless your water, like really emotionally feel it. Like, and I've been embodying that deeply lately and it's feeling amazing. Like as I'm sipping water, I know that that is a living spirit just like me. And I'm and it's and is merging with me and becoming me, and I'm so grateful for it. And I'm really just thank you, great water spirit. I love you so much, the divine feminine. Thank you. Like, wow, this is sustaining my life. This is enabling me to do everything that I love on this planet. Like, it's not something that I just take lightly and mindlessly consume anymore. Every day I'm journaling, I'm exercising, I'm meditating. I meditate like four hours a day now. And it seems like the more I meditate, the more free time I have, the more creativity I have, the more successful I become in every single area. And I'm able to heal my body and completely shift my reality just through meditation. And a lot of times meditating is what's led me to this health path because I realize like, the importance and the effect of it and I start to just look at everything from a more holistic point of view. I'm working with different plant medicines. I'm actually on dieta right now because I'm preparing for my second ayahuasca ceremony coming up um, here in less than a week. I'll be traveling to go sit with the sacred grandmother plant teacher and I'm just I'm beyond excited. And one thing when you're preparing for ayahuasca is you have to have a pretty strict diet, you know, no meat, no dairy, no salt, no sugar, no sex, no alcohol. So it's even more strict. And I, I don't even like to use the word strict, but it's even more mindful than how I normally eat, which is already super clean. And just even like ramping it up. I already was eating like cleaner than anyone I knew. And then I go on the dieta and I'm eating even cleaner and it's just like, whoa, I feel amazing. And when you eat like nutrient dense, rich living foods, you actually don't even need that much. When you're eating crap, you need like a few thousand calories a day to sustain you at least. And like, I, I can like barely eat anything when I'm eating the right stuff and just feel amazing. I'm like, why am I so energized? Why do I feel so damn good? Like, this is why this is so cool. And when you can take it a step further and grow it yourself and like you have a, a relationship with the plant, you know, like I have some peppers growing outside. Just before I recorded this, I was talking to one of my peppers and I'm excited to eat that pepper when it's ready because I have literally hung out with that pepper almost every day and talked to it every day and just like putting my love into it. And I know that that love is going to come back into my body and become me so it's this whole synergistic thing that's very very beautiful and the more we can connect to how we were how we evolved to be in the wild the better everything gets we are so disconnected from our nature human nature has turned into like human cyborg fakeness <laughs> 
So reconnect with your nature. Reconnect with how humans evolved. We evolved to walk a lot. We evolved to be connected to the land, to be sleeping on the ground, to be climbing trees, to be, you know, swimming and cleaning ourselves in natural bodies of water. Like, these are all natural things that can be free and they can raise your vibration like crazy and they can help you manifest the life of your dreams. And I'm just personally feeling really called towards a more sustainable lifestyle where I don't have to keep consuming and keep going to the store every day for all this stuff that I really don't need. And I like society. I trust me. There's so many cool things. You know, I'm a musician. I love performing at venues with sound systems and I love going to movie theaters and I like all these things, but a lot of it has just gotten way out of hand and it's unnatural and it's quite toxic. So I feel really called to be living a more sustainable, natural lifestyle connected with my roots and being a wild human, a child of Mother Earth. I could talk about this for days I have so many little things that I can share with you that can really help you do it, ta help you down this path. For example, I just started sprouting a lot of my foods, a lot of my nuts and seeds. Um, I was just eating some sprouted walnuts and some sprouted papitas, sprouted pumpkin seeds. And I have a jar next to me of quinoa that I'm sprouting. And it just makes it more bioavailable more nutrient dense, easier to digest and absorb and all that. And it's fun. So just little things like that I'm going to continue to share on this podcast and on my YouTube channel and on my Instagram. So if you're not following me over there, make sure you add me. It's just at Burnell Washburn. And you can also find the links to all that stuff in the show notes below. So make sure to follow me on YouTube and Instagram for more um, health and wellness vibes, sustainability vibes. And over the next several years, I'm working towards becoming, you know, reducing my waste, um, becoming more sustainable, potentially going off grid. Um, I'm involved in the permaculture collective here and I'm just soaking up all this knowledge. So I'm going to keep sharing it as I learn it. And you guys can follow my journey and learn from Bernie as I, I I wake up and raise my vibration and elevate my ways of being. So that said, I'm going to go eat some healthy, delicious food because I made myself hungry talking about all of this. And I've been fasting most of the day too. And tonight I'll be sleeping on the floor like always. And tomorrow morning I will be out in the sunshine before I look at any type of screens and I will be mindfully consuming my water with gratitude and love and continuing to just try to be the best person I can be because I love this planet. I love being in a human body temporarily. This temporary human experience is super fun and super awesome and it can just be pure magic, especially if we really take care of ourselves, you know. Think of like if if you have a car, if you were given a brand new Lamborghini on your 16th birthday and you just trashed it and never changed the oil, ran it out of gas, drove it over curbs, didn't ever maintain it in any type of way, just let it get gross and messy and dirty. Like, even though it's a Lamborghini, eventually that thing's going to stop running on you and it's going to be expensive to fix. Well, your body is way, 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 way more valuable than a freaking Lamborghini. So put premium fuel in it, get the best oil changes, keep it clean, take good care of it, and it'll last you a long time, and you'll be able to drive around in your human avatar and have lots of fun on this amazing planet. You'll be able to surf and swim and skydive and scuba dive and play with the children and laugh and dance and be creative and do all the fun, rewarding things that we only get to do on the 3D plane in the physical body on a physical planet. And, uh, you know, I don't want to waste this temporary experience just for 
some quick mouth pleasure, and it's really not even mouth pleasure. I get more mouth pleasure from figs and dates than any type of candy I ever used to have. So it's uh, lots of shifts, and hopefully a couple words that I shared today can help inspire you on your journey, and we can keep waking the love up. Again, shout out to our sponsor, Moss Life. You can check them out at Moss Life, at Official Moss Life, Official M-O-S-S-L-Y-F-E on Instagram. Shoot Cora a message. Tell her you heard about it on Wake the Love Up. Order yourself some jars. Um, she's just an amazing person to support, and you're gonna, your body's going to love you. And yeah, you're going to be feeling amazing. So get yourself some Moss Life. This episode is also brought to you by the one and only Water Fusions. If you're in Utah, go check them out. They're in Sugar House. They make delicious superfoods, smoothies, juices, elixirs, snacks, vitamin supplements, all sorts of things. Um, and they also do DNA scans where they can really dive into your nutrient deficiencies, see what kind of vitamins and minerals that you need more of see what kind of allergies you have, and they can dial in exactly what your body needs from the quantum DNA scan, and they're just really good people. It's a family-run business. The owner's name is DK. Tell him that Burnell sent you. They might hook it up, and um, his wife and his son and his daughter all work there with them, and they just, they're good vibes. They're spreading so much consciousness and so much love. And I feel really, really grateful to have them as a sponsor, helping me optimize my health, helping the tribe, and just like a company I can feel good about supporting. So if you're in Utah, check them out, Water Fusions. Even if you're not in Utah, they can ship stuff to you wherever you're at. Um, obviously, they might not be able to ship like certain smoothies and stuff, but they might be able to ship most of their drinks and some of their vitamins and supplements and all that too. So check them out for sure get yourself some moss life and keep giving yourself the best because you deserve it and not only do you deserve it everyone that you love deserves to have the best you my daughter deserves to have a healthy happy dad who's energized who can play with her and go on hikes with her and do all the fun things you know when i go to the playground or the jumping park, or the trampoline park. I'm one of the only parents who can play with the kiddos and like hang with their type of energy and have just as much fun. And my daughter loves it. We love playing around and being wild and energetic. And I feel like healthier than ever, even though I'm, you know, 30 years old. I, I think I'm going to, when I'm 50, I'm going to be even healthier than I am now because I'm just learning all these things and I'm it's not just like a, a short-term thing to get a, a certain result. It's it's a lifestyle, lifestyle medicine. Um, I think it was Hippocrates or someone, I can't remember. who. I think it might have been Hippocrates. He says, let food be thy medicine and thy medicine be thy food. Or, um, yeah, whatever, you know what I'm saying. Let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food or something like that. Um, yeah. You don't need to take all these crazy supplements and pills and prescriptions and products that are marketed to you. You just need to eat organic, natural, whole, raw foods from the earth and move your body and love yourself and speak kindly to yourself and surround yourself with good people and rewild yourself. Connect with your nature. You are a divine being God consciousness embodied in a physical body here for a reason. And we all deserve to have you at your best. You can't fulfill your mission and your soul's purpose if you're sitting there in the hospital and struggling with your health because you didn't take care of yourself. So do it for you. Do it for everyone you love. And let's keep spreading the wellness vibes. I love you guys so, so, so much. Huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I really, really, really appreciate that. And big thanks to everyone that's sharing these episodes out, helping us grow, creating a ripple effect of goodness and awesomeness all across the world. So if you got any value from today's episode, make sure to share it, 
take a screenshot, tag me on social media, and if you want to get in contact with me, my email is just burnellwashburn at gmail.com, or you can hit me up on Instagram or YouTube. All the links are in the show notes. So let's keep spreading the good vibes and keep waking the love up. I seriously love you with all of my heart, sending you all the abundance, prosperity, and health vibes in the world. Go create an amazing rest of your day, and I'll see you soon on another episode of Wake the Love Up. Is this-